I don't know if I can speak for you, but I'll speak for me. I feel like that in the world of Kershaw knives, specifically their value knives priced less than $50, I am finally emerging from a dangerous, hot, arduous journey across the desert, parched with thirst, almost having given up hope I would ever reach the end. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen, not fancy. Right on, bro. Thanks for clicking out the video. Thanks for watching the knife show. We have a good time here. It's always been that way. It will always be that way. Yes, amen, not fancy. So Kershaw, these days, I'm happy to report as I emerge out of that desert is sucking less. It's sucking less. Don't suck. Uh, and specifically, I'm talking about their value knives. We'll call it under 50 bucks. They're sucking less. I mean, I've been researching what they're coming out with or what they've come out with in the last year. And they're pretty good. Kind of like what I'm going to review right here. The Kershaw Fault Line 8760X. Uh, I like it. It's recommended. Price, you say? Uh, $23 in Amazon. Link below. Use it. I get like two cents if you click that. It don't cost you nothing. And I can go buy a hamburger. <laughs> maybe maybe a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah, I love the fault line, man. It's a really good, I wouldn't say great knife. It's a really good knife. It's a really good effort for the price point. First up, I like its looks. It's rare I bring it to package, or bring it in package, I will here. But it looks cool, right? Looks useful. Looks first cool-ish, right? Agree, not fancy. No, I don't do unboxing videos. They're stupid. Anyways, I got this box. Let's go ahead and enjoy the unopening. No, I don't do that. Here's a knife right here. Boop. We've got two Lee Williams flippers. Old Kershaw designs. Back when they used to be totally awesome. Uh, discontinued. That's a large one. That's a little tiny one I was talking about. So that's a 17. What's that say? 70. And this is a 1740, I think. Love them. So cast members for like eons here. But the fault line, uh, first, wears a really cool name. Okay, I, I like it when knife companies name their knives. Sim something simple. Not a bunch of digits or alphanumeric codings that we have to remember. Fault line. If you want to refer to it as the 8760, you can do that too. Blade shape. Clip. Hollow ground. Steel. 8CR13 MOV. I like it. For the price point, totally excellent. Got no problems with it at all. This also, and I just reviewed in this batch of KRVs, the 1338, which uh, I've boxed up already. It's right here. But it has kind of the, the same thing going on, and that is, I think, a die-pressed blade. So it's not ground. I could be wrong, but it looks like a die-pressed blade to me because it's just kind of smooth. doesn't have really any sharp transitions. This is a cost-saving measure, but it doesn't result in any in my opinion, less performance of the blade and, and its capabilities. Comes wicked sharp, very, very sharp out of box. The grind is symmetrical for a value knife. That is an accomplishment. Sometimes we see where it is not. It is black tie. I'm trying to think of the coating on this. I think it's just black oxide. Whatever it is, it's going to wear off and make your blade look rad when it wears off. I don't think it's Teflon, but it doesn't really matter at this price point. Nice markings. Uh, its overall length is three inches, which is ideal for EDC. I would call this an EDC, a tool knife, just a worker knife. We have an unusual serration pattern on the top spine of the fault line. It's not sharp. You may think you'll be able to do some survival tasks with it. Maybe you can. I think it's mostly for aesthetics. The jimping absolutely sucks on top of it. It's not great. There is some. I would probably take my Dremel wheel, like I've done many times before, and just grind the heck out of it and sharpen these up. Just a $25 knife. Go ahead and modify it. Make it worthwhile for you. Flipper design, fully ambidextrous. No hot spots on the flipper that I can see. Let's see how that sucker comes out. Pretty good. Pretty good. And surprisingly, and this is really surprising to me, it is a captured ball bearing system, KVT. Uh, well, ball bearing, I don't know if it's 
sealed ball bearing. Let's take a look right here. You can kind of see it in there. Look at the stop pin while we're here. Centering of the fault line. With a wrist action, it'll come out more solidly. I mean, it doesn't leap out. It's not an assisted knife, so if you guys like the assistance uh, on your blades, this ain't it. And I guess Kershaw is doing more manual action blades, which I've always liked their assisted openers. They're fine. I think maybe in some areas, some states, some cities, having just a manual action is more legal. Whatever. The protection is holy freak. They never give up, do they? Captured liner lock within the FRN handle. 420 stainless steel liners. The weight on this, if I didn't tell you already, 3.6 ounces. It is a thin liner, but we see that a lot on value knives. And it looks like the timing's really early on it. And I think that's a painted liner lock, which will show some really cool wear over time. I'm flipping it out again to see if I can get the timing better. There you go. It's probably because I just didn't flip it out hard enough. Lifetime warranty, though. I mean, if anything ever goes wrong with this $25 knife, just send it in. They'll replace it, fix it. Kershaw's really good about it. Actually, all of them are. Benchmade's good. Spyderco's good. Colt Steel's awesome about it. I love the coloration on this. The olive drab. Hmm, go figure. Nothing fancy likes the olive drabs and the FDEs. Yep, still. Looks cool. And then you got like a craton insert in it. Uh, it's a rubber insert. And believe it or not, I really like this. The reason is, is because it gives you just the right amount of traction to extract the fault line from your pocket. Which, by the way, carries tip up. I love that, at least on this side. And it's not reversible, which might make you sad if you're a lefty. But at least it's tip up, and you'll be able to get it out of pocket. I wonder if I have a knife on me that... Oh, I do. Dudes, I haven't shown you this. This is sick. This is that Boker FR in G10. Look at this. So I'm already seeing it, so I have skateboard tape. So this is my point, to get it out of pocket... I just put that on, but you won't have to do it with here. You haven't seen this one yet, though. I did the Boker FR. What do you know? It's right here. I didn't even plan this. So I reviewed this one, the titanium. I mentioned this one, showed you an inset, and then I got this one uh, off Mass Drop. And I did, I think, tweet it out. So you should follow my Twitter account. Beautiful knife. S35 steel on this. Super cool. It wasn't, like, massively cheap, but it was, like... I'm guessing, I think like 80 bucks or something. Titanium, blue titanium liner lock. How cool is that with a titanium clip? It's going to show some nice wear over time. Here I'm doing two knife reviews in one. I love this one too. This had VG10 on it, didn't it? Yeah, which is a decent steel, a little bit soft for me. Great rust resistance. God, I love these FRs. They, these bokers are so sick. You should own them. Some of my favorite EDC blades. Huh. Yeah, sorry about that. But I'm showing you for that. And it just happens to be my DC. That's the only reason. I like the Kraton, though. It's well done. You can take the knife apart if you wanted to. Don't know why you would. You can adjust the pivot point. It's just one-sided on the fault line. Usually I recommend don't mess with it. As soon as you start tweaking it up, it's going to have problems. It's going to have centering problems. Let's check that out, by the way. It looks to be... Perfect, actually. Lock up on this. Good. No movement at all. Under hard use, it will loosen. Especially with that thin liner lock, it will. So just a tool knife, though. No big deal. Perfect clip. Look at the clip. I mean, I talked about its placement, that it's not reversible. That's a little bit bad. But as far as the clip, I shouldn't say perfect. It is a deep carry clip. The clip I showed you on... Uh, well, heck, here's one right here. This is, I reviewed this. This is a Dash. I reviewed this in 2016. It's still a, uh, a cast member. I think it's been discontinued. It's a great knife for the money. I like this clip better. Clips, I think, are a little bit, um, I don't know. It's a small detail that you can change easily. There's a lot of different aftermarket clips guys are putting on their blades. I don't recommend buying a $25 knife, though, though and then running out buying a $25 clip for it. <laughs> You can go to eBay and get something some, and just see if you make it work. I actually like this clip. The only thing is, 
is under the clip here you have that craton and so it's kind of going to grab your pants a little bit. I kind of wish they would have made this just FRN and then this portion here craton. That would have been very thoughtful by someone who EDC blades all the time. Chinese production, of course, you can see that right here. Uh, Kershaw makes a lot of these, if not all these knives in China. Uh, ZT makes some in the US, I believe, if not all. Uh, competitive options. Well, for $25, again, it's highly, highly recommended. The fault line is such a great value. It's really cool. One thing I forgot to mention, though, is for my hand size, which is large, it is a small knife. So as an EDC blade, it would totally work. At, but it, I'm a little bit cramped on it right here, if, if that's important to you. But I could say the same thing about the Kershaw, not the Kershaw, the Cold Steel Medium Voyager, right? Same thing. In fact, they, they seem like they're the same creature, at least in their approaches. So I love the Kershaw Medium Voyager. It's one of my all-time favorites. And the, actually, every Voyager they make, I love. Triad lock, super strong. I mean, the, the strength on this will shred that one. But this is a much more expensive knife. Some may say it's better steel. This one's wearing my edge too, dudes. Check that out. I've edged that sucker. Stone washed. You get another knife review. This one rides really high in the pocket. They're both chunky too. So this one is 14 millimeters wide, which is about 0.55 inches. That's, and this is actually even a little bit thicker. And I said that in my reviews. Like it's not a super thin knife to carry. And I like thin knives to carry. It's always been that way. Here's a lightning hanging out here. One of my EDC lightnings OTS. Let's see how, which one is. Yeah, this is thinner. This one carries so well. I can't believe how good lightnings are. Da, 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 da. Gonna play with my lightning. Okay, not that. Yeah, so it seems like a Kershaw. I'm sorry, the Cold Steel Voyager to me. Good competitive option, actually. And then we have some great knives coming directly out of China. Some are totally original designs. Some are homages, combining features of other blades. In other words, what pretty much every knife manufacturer does. We've seen this blade shape a bazillion times. Uh, there's really not much original coming out of knives. But don't forget the Enlin EL06. This is wearing either 9CR or 13CR MOV. This particular one is 9CR, and it's a great sub Subenza homage. Let's put it up against the fault line. And I think they're going to be about the same price. This one's going to be a little bit heavier. Did I write the weight down? I think it's like a 4.2 ounce knife on the EL06. Link below. These are great knives. And they come in different colorations too. Because uh, we're talking about value knives. We're talking about how much knife you can go out and spend just $25 on and be happy. I'm breaking into my knife storage. I'm going to peek into this real quick. What's in there? That fancy oh, all kinds of fun stuff. All kinds of parts. Oh, freaking A, man. I've got the Lone Wolf in here. Awesome. God, I love that knife. It's so cool. The wood. I'm looking for this one right here. Oh, that's the rat one. Oh, speaking of replacing clips, dudes. There you go. So this, I actually got this off eBay. It is, I think, a titanium clip, and I just modified it and put it on. So that's my rat one. Awesome blade. Great design. Os 8. And uh, that's not Cerakoted, Duracoated I did. I'm going to go skateboard tape again. Hmm, that's a cool place. Nothing fancy. You need to show us all your knives. Dude, we'll be here for like 12 hours. Oh, there's a broken skull, dudes. Love that knife. Steve Austin's broken skull. That's such a cool blade. And this is really cool that we brought this out because look at the thinness. This is what I raved about. Something that your fault line's not going to have. Hmm, nice tie on nothing. Thanks. Cool coloration, G10. This is a Cold Steel collaboration with Steve Austin. Dude, that's such a cool knife. Hmm, nothing fancy. I can't believe you love knives after all these years. I do. What else you got in there, nothing? Oh, freaking A, man. I've got this. My mini SOCOM Auto. Awesome. Microtech. Dude, we're going all over the place in this review. This is my flight suit knife. So in the Air Force, I carried this in my flight suit pocket, like, for years. And it still operates perfectly. 
I think though this started rotating on me so I had to lock it down and it was slow deploying. I think I sent it back to Microtech and they tuned it up for me for free and sent it back. Kind of like I was saying, all, all the reputable knife manufacturers have great service. Here it is. This is an Inland EL06. I think that's what it is. Yeah, in that cool desert camouflage pattern. So if we're talking value knives, how much knife can you get for just $25? I mean, can you beat this formula? Not really. I still love this one too. It's awesome. In fact, I'd probably EDC the fault line, this one, over these. These seem more like tactical blades to me. They have more reach. They have good jimping on the top. They're strong. They're a captured liner lock. These Sobenza homages are awesome. The Inlands. But the fault line is excellent. It is totally recommended for the $25. Actually, less than $25. And uh, so are these if you can find them. Leaf Flipper Designs. Uh, well done, man. It's good to see uh, Kershaw shucking less at Fancy Knife Show. Thanks for watching. See you in the bunker, dudes.